All right, guys, so one of the reasons why Joe Biden's disaster in Afghanistan is such a big deal is because it does put the United States in an interesting position on the world stage in regards to our ability to stand behind our allies and to basically uh, do what we say, okay? And, and this is a, a big deal because countries like Russia and China whom are part of the global chess game, right, are going to use Biden's weakness or his perceived weakness as uh, propaganda towards our allies in order to make our allies have less faith in the United States and our military and our ability to support our allies, okay? That's what's going to happen. And that is what is happening as China is already putting propaganda out there towards Taiwan, basically telling them that, hey, uh, look at what happened with the U.S. and Afghanistan. That's basically what's going to happen to you guys, okay? Because China's basically telling Taiwan, we about to pull up, right? We're going to pull up, okay? And uh, if we pull up, <laughs> the U.S. is not going to interfere, right? China even told Japan they would nuke them a few weeks ago, okay? China is, is really not playing around. Right, and then this is why you can't have a weak fool, a weakling in office like Joe Biden doing turbulent times like this where China is really smelling themselves, okay? They're smelling themselves a lot. And they're literally celebrating and laughing at what happened in Afghanistan. And they're gonna use that as propaganda to fight against our interests, right? They're just flat out saying it. They're not even trying to hide it. Again, it's, it's the same uh, thing with Russia and Putin, right? How Putin obviously thinks Biden is a weakling, okay? He obviously has no respect for Biden. You did not see this happen under Trump. Whether or not they actually like Trump or not, they definitely showed the man respect because they know Trump. <laughs> you know, like, Trump has no issues uh, using force. Look what happened to Soleimani in Iraq, okay? Trump said, listen, try me. Look, that's just kind of how things work. Right? Sometimes you got to flex. Okay? And uh, Biden <laughs> has not been flexing anything but weakness. So let's read here. The chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan has presented Beijing with a propaganda boost. With Chinese state media capitalizing on the crisis to trumpet the sole posed decline of America and taunt Taiwan with threats of invasion. The jinganistic rhetoric... Uh, coincided with air and novel drills launched Tuesday by the Chinese military, which sent fighter jets and warships near Taiwan in response to what it called the repeated collusion and provocation by Washington and Taipei. In recent years, China's ruling Communist Party has sought to present the U.S. as a fading global power. And now the return of the Taliban to the streets of the Afghan capital is being touted by the state media as the death nail of U.S. hegemony. Quote, the fall of Kabul marks the collapse of an international image and credibility of the U.S. A commentary from state news agency, uh, X2, said Monday. I mean, that's basically what I've been telling you guys, right? I mean, this has far-reaching implications, okay? And um, <laughs> later on in this video, we're going to talk about more implications and a decision regarding what to do with the Afghan refugees, um, some of whom helped us out militarily. What do we do with those people? That also is going to have global implications, right? And I'm going to talk about it later in this video, but there's a lot of things going on here. And listen, I'm going to tell you, this disaster under Joe Biden, I mean, it's really, really, really going to have um, some negative effects on us when it comes to our credibility on the world stage. It just is, right? It just is. Following the blows of the global financial crisis and the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the decay of the American hegemony has become an undisputed reality. Its failure in Afghanistan is another turning point in the spiritual fall, it added. The Global Times, a state-run nationalist tabloid, meanwhile, has repeatedly played up what is described as the unreliability of U.S. commitment to its allies, suggesting the self-governing island of Taiwan could face the same fate as Afghanistan in the event of conflict with China. Taiwan and mainland China have been governed separately since the end of the Civil War more than seven decades ago in which the defeated nationalists fled to Taipei, but the Chinese Communist Party views Taiwan, a democratic island of around 24 million people, as the inseparable part of its territory despite having never controlled it. 
Quote, once a war breaks out in the Taiwan Straits, the island's defenses will collapse in hours and the U.S. military won't come to help, the Global Times said in an editorial Monday. So, I mean, China's basically saying, hey, the U.S. is going to abandon you guys. OK, they're going to abandon you. They're not going to pull up. They're not going to show up. Not going to do anything. Right. And this is why they're telling Japan, if y'all pull up, if you try to interfere, we're going to nuke y'all, too. Right. That China is a country that is out of control. And, and I'm telling you guys, that's why it's so important that you have somebody that is strong in leadership. Right. You cannot have somebody that's going to be a weakling, that's going to roll over, that's not going to flex. Because China is flexing all over us right now. They do not care. They don't care. They're just openly threatening our allies. Saying the U.S. ain't going to do nothing. They're not going to pull up. So, I mean, listen. It could all be words. Right? That's that It could be. At the end of the day. But at the same time, they're conducting military activity. They're getting more belligerent by the day. Arthur Ding, an international relations professor at National uh, Qingqing uh, University in Taipei, called Beijing's propaganda messaging on Afghanistan cheap psychological warfare, noting it was intended to convey the U.S. alleged unreliability, especially to Taiwan's more receptive opposition supporters who favor closer ties with Beijing. For decades, an uneasy status quo governed cross-strait relations, but under President Xi Jinping, China has increased military activity around the island in response to what it considers to be growing calls for formal independence. Perhaps unsurprisingly, discussions have broken out across Taiwanese social media in recent days as to how the government in Tampai would respond to an event of a Chinese invasion and whether the U.S. would indeed come to the island's defense. So much so that on Tuesday, uh, Taiwan's premier uh, publicly stressed the island would not collapse like Afghanistan if invaded. In a press conference, Premier uh, Tu Xing Chang appeared to confront the Chinese threats directly, saying Taiwan's leaders are not afraid of being killed or imprisoned by powerful countries that want to swallow up um, Taiwan using force. Politicians in Taiwan's ruling Democratic Progressive Party also dismissed attempts to draw parallels between Taiwan and Afghanistan, saying such comparisons are inherently fraught. Quote, if we're going to make Afghan comparisons, Taiwan survived that moment 40 plus years ago. U.S. troops left Taiwan in 1979 after recognizing the PRC. Uh, we Lee, a local ruling party official, wrote on Twitter referring to China by abbreviation of its official name, the People's Republic of China. So no, Taiwan is not Afghanistan, he added. Carlos Yotaka, spokesperson for Taiwan's presidential office, said the lazy comparisons ignore the realities of both countries and show little regard for the immense human suffering uh, facing many in Afghanistan today. OK, so basically, in a nutshell, what happened in Afghanistan right under the Biden administration has sent messages to people in Taiwan and that's essentially made it so leaders in Taiwan has have to come out and say, hey, listen, you know, um, this is not an Afghanistan situation. Right. And it's a damn shame that our allies even have to go out and say that. Right. It's a damn shame that they even have to question whether or not we will be there for them. Right. Well, whether we will abandon them again, this is going to have negative implications that are going to be far reaching into the future. Something else. That is going to affect us in the future, especially if we want to go on one of these nation building extravaganzas again, um, is what we do with these Afghanistan refugees, okay, that are being withdrawn from that country and some of whom are coming to the U.S., right? As Texas prepares for an influx of Afghan refugees as U.S. military withdraws troops. Now, I'm not really going to read this article, okay? I'm just going to summarize it just for the sake of time. Um, basically what's happened is, is that right now Texas is expected to receive maybe a hundred or so, uh, refugees, right? But they expect that that's going to, uh, become more over time, right? And, uh, we could be receiving thousands, right? Um, refugees, right? Tens of thousands of refugees from Afghanistan over the next few weeks or so. Okay. Now this has brought up questions about what should we do about this, right? Should we even be accepting uh, refugees from Afghanistan? And the way I want you guys to think about it is like this, right? It's like I said when it came to the whole China-Taiwan situation. What we do in this situation will send messages to our allies about if the United States is going to be behind them um, in the future when ish hits the fan, okay? And this is one of those situations because technically some of these Afghani refugees were translators for us. 
They worked with our military. They helped us out on the battlefield. Okay. They helped us in the war in Afghanistan. And those people, if they stay in Afghanistan, um, bad things are going to happen to them. Right. So if we leave them there. We're basically leaving them there to die. Right. And obviously, if we do that, that is going to have, again, negative implications in the future. Again, if we want to go on another uh, <laughs> nation building journey in which we invade a country and we need help from the locals, um, these locals who are helping us under the promise that, well, the U.S. is going to take care of them. They're going to protect them. It might not necessarily be so easy to do that anymore. Right. It won't be very easy to do that and to establish trust with those people if uh, we just let these refugees stay in Afghanistan, specifically the ones that have helped us. Now, does that mean we need to take everybody? No. Right. What that means is that those who specifically helped us and probably uh, women and children. Yeah, um, <laughs> they should probably be able to come. Right. However, however, they have to be carefully vetted. Right. They have to be carefully vetted, carefully monitored and slowly introduced into the American society. OK, we have to make sure they do not hold any extremist beliefs. We got to make sure that they don't have any resentment towards America and that, you know, we understand who we're getting. OK, because we cannot just release any and everybody into our society and we don't know who they are this is why i'm so against illegal immigration is because we don't know who these people are we have to be vetting these people right and we also need to put the onus on other countries the other countries that uh invaded afghanistan with us because we weren't the only people that were there right uh to also take some of these refugees okay so all some of these other countries you know britain uh y'all need to take some refugees okay y'all gotta lessen the blow here right we gotta Make sure these uh, people are, you know, going to, you know, every country that was kind of involved in this, not just us, okay, uh, just so we can spread it out. So we're not taking everybody. And I don't really trust the Biden administration to do that, right? But I will say, I mean, listen, it's in his best interest to do that because the worst thing that could happen is if, you know, there is some type of um, event that happens that harms the American people because of an Afghan refugee, Right. That's the worst thing. Right. That could happen. But at the same time, it's also bad if we just leave them over there. So with that being said, you know, people that have helped us and women and children. Sure. But when it comes to uh, fighting age, you know, young Afghan males, I don't know, man, maybe they should stay in their country. OK, that's just kind of how I feel about it. Right. But at the same time, I do recognize the pros and cons of, you know, the scenario of, of both scenarios here. Right. And we really don't want to hurt our image more on the national stage in regards to the U.S. ability to keep their promises. Because, again, if we were to do this again, invade another country, um, you know, we we'll want to make sure that, you know, the people there who we say we're fighting for understand that we're not going to leave them uh, when things get rough and then we're not going to abandon them. We also want to assure our allies, right, our actual allies on the global stage, you know, other nations that we're going to be there to protect them like we say we are okay otherwise again that could have serious consequences for our relationship with those countries right moving forward and the power uh that russia and china has to um act against our interests specifically in regards to our allies like what you see happening in taiwan so again this stuff is is super complicated man and um you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But what I do know is that I don't really trust Biden to handle this the right way. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.